Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 24 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about inserting, updating, and deleting data from Grid View using Object Data Source Control. In part 23 of the ASP.NET Grid View tutorial, we discussed about achieving exactly the same thing using SQL Data Source Control. In this video, we will be using Object Data Source Control to do the same thing. Now, we will actually be modifying the example that we discussed in part 23. So I strongly recommend to watch part 23 of the ASP.NET Grid View tutorial before proceeding with this video. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So instead of using SQL Data Source Control, we want to use Object Data Source Control. So since we want to use Object Data Source Control to perform insert, update, and delete on this Grid View control, we need to have Employee Data Access Layer, which is going to contain those methods basically to select edit, delete, and insert data. Okay, so first let's go ahead and build employee data access layer. And to do that, right click on your project, add a class file, and let's name that class file as employee data access layer.cs. Okay, so that should add employee access data, I mean employee data access layer class. Now, basically, to encapsulate this employee related information that's present in this TBL employee table, we need employee class. So let's go ahead and create employee class. So I'm going to call this public class employee. And obviously we need to have, you know, properties to represent these columns that we have in this table, employee ID, name, gender, and city. And to speed things up, I have that already typed. So let me copy that and paste it in our employee data access layer class. So all of these are auto-implemented properties. All right, so we have you know, our employee object now defined. So obviously the first thing that we need to do is, since we want to retrieve and display data within the grid view control, we need a select method, which is going to return all the employees that are present in this table. And to speed things up again, I have this typed. So let me copy that and paste it within our employee data access layer class. So this is actually a static method. Now we have some compilation errors here. That's because these are ADO.NET classes. So we need to import ADO.NET namespaces, which are system.data, system.data.client, and system.configuration. So let's paste them within our employee data access layer class file. And that should get rid of those compilation errors. All right, so if you look at this, you know, get all all employees method, it's a pretty simple and straightforward method. All this code is simple ADO.NET code. Okay, so if you're new to ADO.NET, we have discussed about, you know, uh, ADO.NET in detail in ADO.NET tutorial, so I strongly recommend to watch those videos. So basically what we are doing here, we are creating a list of employee object, and then obviously we are using configuration manager class to read the connection string from web.config file, and then we are using that connection string to build the SQL connection object, and then look at our SQL command. We are simply saying select star from TBL employee. So retrieve all the records from TBL employee table. And then once we execute that query, so we are looping through each record that we get back. And then we are creating an employee object and then populating that employee object, you know, the employee ID name, gender, and city, and then adding that employee object to that list. And once we have finished looping through each row, finally, we are returning that list. So that's our select method you know, which is going to return the employees. So obviously, along with the select method, we also need, you know, since we want to perform insert, update, and delete as well, we need methods to do that as well, okay? So I have those methods as well here. So let me copy those methods, and then we'll go over them quickly. All right. So if you look at these methods, you know, these are simple and straightforward methods. So obviously this is delete employee method. So if we want to delete an employee record, we need the primary key, you know, the employee ID. So this method is actually taking in employee ID as the parameter. And using that, we have written some, you know, the similar ADO.NET code. And look at the query delete from TBL employee, where employee ID is equal to at employee ID. Obviously, that's a parameterized query. And to this SQL parameter, we need to supply a value. And that value is coming into this method as another parameter. OK, so that's delete employee. And along the same lines, we have update employee. So when we click edit and then when we update, we are going to update name, gender, and city. And obviously, we base, you know, we we update that row based on the primary key value. So we need primary key as well. So all the four parameters 
the update method needs to have the, all, have all those four parameters and that's what we have here and again this is simple adio.net code okay so look at the update statement here update tbl employee set name is equal to at name gender is equal to at gender and city is equal to at city where employee id is equal to at employee id so again a parameterized update query and to these SQL parameters within that update query, we need to pass values again, which are coming into this method as parameters. So all these lines are actually, you know, associating those parameters to this command object. And finally, we are executing the query. You know, simple adio.net code again. And finally, insert employee method. Now, look at this. Uh, one of the YouTube subscribers asked me, you know, when he tries to insert a row by providing name, gender, and city, he is getting a runtime error, you know, asking that it requires a value for employee ID. That may be because in your table, TBL employee table, this employee ID might not be an identity column. Usually in reality, you know, when we add rows to a table, you know, the primary column is auto-generated. Okay, and it gets auto-generated only if you if you you know set that as an identity column. We discussed about that in SQL Server video tutorial, so please watch that video. So if this column is not an identity column on this table, then you will have to supply a value for that column as well. But since on my table it's an identity column, I don't have to supply you know a value for employee ID column. It's auto-generated when we try to insert a row into this table. So that's the reason why I'm supplying only name, gender, and city. Okay? So that's the reason if you look at this insert employee method, I only have three parameters. And look at our insert parameterized query, insert into TBL employee, and we want to supply values for name, gender, and city, which are coming in as parameters into this method. And again, we are associating those parameters to the command object and executing that command. So pretty simple and straightforward. If you look at this employee data access layer class, it contains four static methods. You know, the first method returns employees. That's for select. And this one for delete, this one for update, and the final one for insert. Okay, so that's it. We are done. So let's build our project now. So this should have compiled these, you know, this employee class, employee data access layer and employee classes. Now let's go back to our web form. Now I'm not going to change the HTML of the grid view control or this validation summary controls. All I'm going to do is get rid of the SQL data source control. Now if I flip this form to the, you know, source mode, look at this. I'm going to get rid of the SQL data source control. And instead of that, I'm going to use object data source control. But before that, if you recollect from part 23 in web form 1.aspx, look at this, the SQL data source 1 control is referred in this, you know, link button insert click. So obviously, if we delete the SQL data source 1 control from this web form, we are going to get a compilation error. That's fine. So if I build this now, look at this, I already have a red squiggly line there indicating that the SQL data source one control doesn't exist. But for now, I'm going to comment these lines. So let's comment them, control K and control C to comment, you know, the lines using keyboard. All right, so I've got rid of that SQL data source control. Now I want to use object data source control instead of SQL data source control. So I'm gonna go to the data tab and retrieve object data source control and obviously we need to configure this so choose your business object it's going to be demo dot employee data access layer so I'm gonna select that click next and look at this this is the very important screen where we select our respective method so to select data which method we want to use get all employees to update data we have update employee method and to insert, we have insert employee method. And finally, select your delete method. That's it. So let's finish that. And now if I flip this to the source mode, notice that I have now object data source control. And obviously, you know, your delete method, insert method, select method, and update method all are specified and look at this type name is your employee data access layer which is present in demo dot I mean demo namespace okay if you look at the delete parameters employee ID insert parameters name gender and city we don't have to supply a value for employee ID column update parameters we need all the four you know parameters basically 
Okay, so that's the second change that we have to do. First, we added employee data access layer class, then we replaced the SQL data source control with object data source control. Now, the most important thing is to associate this object data source control with the grid view control. So how are they associated? Using a property called data source ID. So instead of SQL data source one, I want to use object data source one. You can change it directly within the HTML here, or you can use the designer, you know, whatever is convenient. So if I come here and then if I say object data source one, look at this, I get a warning. So this is very important again. It's asking you, do you want to refresh fields and keys for grid view one control? I would say no, because I want to retain, you know, those things as it is. All I'm changing is object, instead of SQL data source one, I'm using object data source one. Okay, all right, let's save that. And, and another thing that we have to correct is the code in this, you know, link button insert click. Let's on comment that. And instead of, ob, uh, you know, SQL data source one, we actually want to use object data source one. So that's the ID. So let's go back to webform1.aspx. That's it. We are done. So now, instead of using SQL data source control, we are actually using object data source control. Let me run this now, and everything should work as expected. You know, the behavior should be exactly the same. So I click edit, I change Mary to Mary1, from female to male, and maybe from New York to NY, and then let's update that. Look at that, it works as expected. On the other hand, if I try to blank that, and then I click update, look at that, I get validation message as expected. And then if I don't supply anything, and then if I try to insert, look at that, I get those validations again. Okay, I can cancel this, I try to insert, validation errors, now let's say test, let's select gender, and maybe test as the city, let's insert that, look at that, that row gets inserted. Now let's try to delete that row, and look at that, everything. Everything is working exactly in the same fashion, except that now instead of using SQL data source control, we are actually using object data source control. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.